بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد اي الاحباب we reached the fifth lesson i believe in the treaties of our sheikh sheikh ibrahim ar-rahili hafiz allah ta'ala the encouragement to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Shaykh said, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, Imam Ahmed said regarding adhering to the Quran and the Sunnah. There is after the Book of Allah, Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and speaking about it, and the rightly guided companions, and following the Sunnah. Success. From their extreme diligence and caution from differing from the Sunnah is that they strove to investigate issues and resolve them, then resolve that if a hadith was authenticated, then it was their madhab, meaning their way. For this reason, Imam Abu Hanifa stated, if a hadith is authenticated, then it is my madhab. Likewise, Imam Malik, rahimahullah ta'ala, rahimahumullah jami'an, said, Verily, I am a man, I make mistakes, and sometimes I'm correct. Therefore, scrutinize my opinions. Everything that agrees with the book and the sunnah, then take it. Everything that disagrees with the book and the sunnah, then leave it. Rahimahumullah jami'an. Ayol Ahbab, this is incredibly important and powerful statement because it shows us and illustrates us for us, uh, illustrates for us uh, the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he said, "Alayhi salatu wasalam, kullu ibn Adam khata wa khayran khatayin tawabun." All the children of Adam make mistakes or commit sins, and the best of those sinners is those who repent. Letting us know in another statement, also Imam Malik had said. That kulu yusibu yukti illa hada sa illa hada sa ida illa sahiba hada al qabr or kama qal. Imam Malik is reported to have said also, rahimahullah ta'ala, that everyone makes uh, mistakes and sometimes get things correct except the inhabitant of that grave. And he was pointing to the grave of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So letting us know that, and this is not to take from our ulama, and I'm not emphasizing that to belittle the ulama, so we have to internalize that and, 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 and realize that. But I'm also showing us, showing the point which is from the madhab of the salaf of this ummah, that no one is free from mistakes. And that we do not make taqlid, we do not blind follow any and everyone, we don't blind follow anyone in everything related to the religion. And the ulama, they, de they have extensive debates about the issue of taqlid. Some ulama say it's muharram, usually the zahiriya. And I know from our contemporary imams like Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi, Allah Yarhamahu, also held this view about taqlid, has a very strong view point about taqlid. However, many of the other ulama, they say that in some situations, like Ben Uthameen speaks about this extensively, and go back to those books if you have the opportunity to look into the, uh, the, into the issue more. However, the point being, especially in Aqidah and, and Ittaqad and, and Creed, that you can't blind follow. You have to have knowledge about what you believe. I mean, it doesn't mean every Masail, but you need to know who Allah is, how to worship Him properly. Tawheed al rububiyyah Tawheed al uluhiyah Tawheed al asmai wa sifat. You need to, to know those things yourself. Not my imam says this. My imam negates the sifat. I'm going to ne negate the sifat. My imam affirms the sifat. I'm going to affirm the sifat. You have to know 
from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about those issues of itiqad. So Imam Malik said, Rahimahullah ta'ala, very I am a man, I make mistakes and sometimes I am correct. Therefore scrutinize my opinions. Imam Malik said this. Who out of our ulama, who, who today is like Imam Malik? No one. We all need those imams. We iqtada bi, bi akwalihim. We adhere to their statements and fiqh and understanding the, the religion. Those great imams, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi'i, wa Imam Malik, wa Imam Ahmed. We adhere to what they adhere to because they were on the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were on the sabil of salaf. Some of them were from the salaf. Were from the first three generations. Rahimahumullah jami'an. And the beauty, the beauty, the hum humbleness of Imam Malik, and we should all, we have to have this humility. The, when he said, everything that disagrees with the book and the sunnah, then leave it. He said, everything that agrees with the book and the sunnah, then take it. So if you say something, or you hear something, and it's in accordance with the Quran and the sunnah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then accept it. If it's, if it contradicts it, then avoid it. Leave it. Then our Shaykh said, Shaykh Ibrahim Hafidullah Ta'ala said, Then these narrations, and there are numerous, and what was related with similar meanings, are well known from the Salaf, with their various terminologies and statements. This is evidence to support the Salafs exalting this foundation, which was from the well-known foundations that were agreed upon between them. For this reason... It affected every aspect of their lives and determination to get knowledge and in their worship, rulings, and dealings. For they were callers to the book and the sunnah in their actions. That is why it is said in describing the companions radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een that they collected the book and through them it was established. So may Allah have unlimited mercy upon them. What a great effect they had upon the ummah and they were the most beneficial ones for it. So people after the time of the great Salaf became weak in applying that foundation. Likewise, they became weak in the rest of the foundations of the religion and its branches. So the nation became disharmonious and separated. And innovation did not spread through the nation and division afflicted concerning their religion until after the Muslims became weak and refrained from following the book and the sunnah of their Prophet ﷺ. They fell into what their Lord had warned them against in his statement, and do not be like those who differed and divided after clarity came to them. Ayul Ahbab, look in the ayat that the Shaykh mentioned, and Allah mentions this throughout the Quran in, in many different verses. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Bayna, لَمْ يَكُنِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَحْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ مُنْفَقِينَ حَتَّى تَأْتِيهُمُ الْبَيْنَ The Ahl al-Kitab and the Mushriks, the pagans, they didn't go astray حَتَّى تَأْتِيهُمُ الْبَيْنَ Until the clarity came to them. So meaning that knowledge came, clarity came, a sunnah of a messenger came, alayhim after salatu salam, then they deviated. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. That's the scariest thing right there. That when we know the truth and we don't act upon the truth. Or we're ignorant of the truth and we act upon something else. Hatta ta'tiyum al they differed. They, they, they went into divisions and groups and sects and jama'at after the truth came to them. Isn't this what we, we have today? Don't we have hizbiyah? Don't we have ta'asab? Don't we have taqlid? For, after the bayan has come clear to us. The sunnah is clear. The madhab of the salaf is clear. But we divide into sects and groups and parties, political parties, uh, jama'at. 
And the bayonet is there. The clarity is there. But we, we, we have many reasons for dividing. Following this sheikh, blind following this scholar, blind following this alam, blind following this Sufi marid, going to the grave of this one. All of these things we divide upon. Instead of going back to the book of the Sunnah. If you disagree over something, go back to Allah and His Messenger. Did the Prophet ﷺ celebrate his birthday? Nope. Did the Salaf celebrate their birthdays? Nope. Did Allah sanction these practices? Nope. Did the Prophet ﷺ supplicate to the dead at the grave sites? Nope. Did the Sahaba go to the Prophet ﷺ's grave, supplicate to him? Nope. Did they seek intercession from the Prophet ﷺ after his death? Nope. Ayul Ahbab, the clarity has come to us. We have to take that. Then the Shaykh said, Half of the Allah Ta'ala, the Prophet ﷺ of this nation spoke truthfully when he stated, The people of the book divided into 72 sects, and this nation will divide into 73 sects. In another narration of that same hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, If Tarakat al Yahud alayta was a'in firqa, if Tarakat al Nasara alayta natain was a'in firqa, the Prophet ﷺ said that the Jews will break into 71 sects, the Christians into 72 sects, and my Ummah into 73 sects, all of them in the hellfire, except one, illa wahid. They said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, those people who are upon my sunnah and the sunnah of my companions. Alayhi salatu wa sallam. Radiyallahu ta'ala majma'een. That's our prescription, ayil ahbab. And yes, the nation would break into sects and groups. And this is after clarity has come to us. How many groups and sects we, we, we can... Let's just talk about some temporary jama'at. How many? We have a khwani muslimin, we have jama'at at tabliq. We have Jamaat Takfir wa Hijra. We have uh, the Mahajirun, which are a group of them. We have Hizb Tahrir, another group that has issues with Takfir and denying the Qadr. We have the Ibadiyah, which is a sect. We have the, uh, you know, the, let's just talk about the groups instead of the sects. We have uh, so many groups and sects. The sur Sururis. We have um, many, many. Many groups that people have fallen into partisanship. Quraniyun wa'iyadhim illa min dharika. But instead, we're ordered to go back to the Quran and the Sunnah where we differ and not to break into groups. Wa'tasimu bihabli la jami'in wa la tafaraku. Adhere all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. All of you. Do not divide. The Shaykh said, Hafidh Allah Ta'ala, this division entering of desires and contradiction of the text based upon intellect and prejudice towards men, blind partisanship toward particular scholars and methodologies are all from the characteristics of the people of innovation which has become well known over time. Allahu Akbar. That sect, that uh, statement, let's dissect that very briefly. The Shaykh said, this division entering of desires and contradiction of the text based upon intellect this is what the Ashuris do this is what the many of the groups do they prefer and Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah wrote has a, a book a five volume book extensively about this about the taking the um, the text over the in, over your intellect because all of our intellect uh, we have different levels of intellect my intellectual capacity is different than yours and yours is different than your brothers or your sisters or your mothers or your friends or the president or the king or the, the sheikh. We all have different levels of understanding. Our intellects are not the same. So the way we pr process information, process understandings, if I, we read an ayat, some things are going to be clear. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, uh, Alif Lam Mim, Alif Lam Mim, Allahu la ilaha illahu 
أي القيوم نزل عليك الكتاب بالحق مصدقا لما بين يدي وأنزل التوراة والإنجيل من قبل هدى للناس وأنزل الفرقان إن الذين كفروا بآيات الله لهم عذاب شديد والله عزيز ذو الانتقام إن الله لا يخفى عليه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء هو الذي أنزل هو الذي يل... هو ال... هو الذي يل... أنزل عليكم كتاب منه آيات محكمات وهن أم الكتاب وأخرى متشابهة That's the shahid I wanted to mention is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ali, in Surah Ali Imran that uh, Allah has revealed some ayats, some of the verses from it are uh, from the verses of the Quran or some verses which are clear there are some verses that are clear and that have clear rulings, clear hukum. Zina is haram. Establish the prayer. Uh, the punishment for this is this. That are clear. Muhkamat. Women who ayatum muhkamat wa hunna ummul kitab wa ukhra mutashabihat. And then there's other ayats that are ambiguous, meaning they have more than one meaning. If something has more than one meaning, then our intellect, when we look at those, we're going to have different. Deductions. You're going to deduce this. So and so is going to do do, do this. It, it 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 has possibility for more than one meaning, more than one interpretation, and our intellect is going to affect our interpretation. That's why we go back to Kitabi Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So some of the sects, like the uh, the Ashidis and other groups, they prefer their intellect to the text. They use their intellect to judge the text. So. How is this true? Am I lying? Let's bring some evidence. The Ashari say, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi al kareem Ar-Rahman ala arsh istawa The most merciful rose above his throne. Ahl sunnah we say, Allah rose above his throne in a manner that suits his majesty. We don't know how. We don't negate it. We affirm it because Allah affirmed it for himself. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam affirmed it. So we affirm it. Is there anything wrong with affirming what Allah and His Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, affirmed? I don't think so. The Ashari say, la, 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 no, 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 no. This could make a resemblance between Allah and His creation. If you say Allah rose, well, I, I ro rise out of my bed. I rise out of my chair. You're making a resemblance. So in order to flee from this resemblance, the Ashadis then say, no, it means this. They use their akal, their intellect, to say istoa means istola. They change the, the, the actual lettering. This is ta'wil uh, lefthi. This is ta'wil in the actual, uh, the, the, the text. Allah says istoa, ar-Rahman ala arsh. Al-Arsh, istawa. Allah said istawa. The Ashidi say istawa, istawa means istola. It means istola, meaning Allah took the throne or with his power. So they interpret it based upon their intellect, not based on uh, what Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with. Or the Salaf, the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, with the Tabi'een, what they came with. Radiallahu ta'ala'inu majma'een. That's not how that's not how they interpret it. So Ahl Sunnah is safe. They say, hey, Allah affirmed this about himself, we affirm it. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam affirmed this, we affirm it. We don't change the meaning. We don't use our intellect to do that which is more befitting for us, more befitting for the context of the times, more befitting for our understanding, because we're afraid of this or we're afraid of that. No. We go with Kitabi Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as it was revealed to Muhammad ibn Abdullah salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi. And we don't have the prejudice in the blind following of men and we've already discussed this and to their scholars and their methodologies and their madhabs. But instead we have to go back to the book and the sunnah and the madhab of the salaf of this ummah. Rahimahumullah jami'an. The Shaykh said, all of these aspects, meaning having one's desires, contradicting the text based upon your intellect, having blind following and blind partisanship and prejudice to a particular medheb or a particular scholar or a particular uh, person or mufti or what have you, all of these are from the characteristics of the people of innovation, ahl bidah 
Ahlabida wal Ahwa, which has become well known over time. Then the Shaykh said, Hafidhullahu Ta'ala, he said, the Ummah over the past, uh, the last few years has become afflicted by that chronic ailment, even some of those who associate themselves with the Sunnah. This is what our Shaykh said, Hafidhullah Ta'ala. Therefore, they share in the fitna, in the trial, in the problems of the people of innovation and desires under the name of Ahl Sunnah. Allahu Akbar. Let me, let's look at that statement. So he said over the past few years, unfortunately, that this sickness has even spread to some people who, can, who call themselves from, from Ahl Sunnah, who associate with Ahl Sunnah. Perhaps they're from Ahl Sunnah. They're Salafi even. They're from Ahl Sunnah. But the problem is, is they followed some aspects of the people of innovation. They began to blind follow a certain sheikh or a certain group of mashayikh. They began to say, you're either with us or against us. Have this George Bush mentality, this cowboy mentality. Join us. You better agree with me on this or I'm going to boycott you or I'm not going to give you salams. One issue, a brother who's known for the sunnah can be taken off the sunnah in their eyes. So this shows us the sickness has invaded us. It hasn't invaded our minhaj. Our minhaj is still the same. Allahu Akbar. The minhaj doesn't need you. That's what you have to remember. Quran, kitab illa wa sunnah rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the method of the salaf does not need me, doesn't need you, doesn't need him, doesn't need that maktaba, doesn't need that group, doesn't need that sect, doesn't need that group of brothers or sisters. It doesn't need you. It doesn't need anything because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this re religion to Muhammad ibn Abdullah as a guidance and a mercy for mankind. So you better get on that mercy and you better get on that sirat al-mustaqim and you better leave off innovation and leave off your vain desires and leave off blind following and calling to your group and your group of brothers and oh you didn't make tabdi of so and so you didn't you didn't declare so and so an innovator your friend so and so he is he's doing this and he's he's off it because of this and we got a fatwa from sheikh so and so about this subhanallah may allah help us and forgive us and help this ummah and help ahl sunnah to unite our hearts and forgive us of our many sins may allah forgive us our brothers and sisters and forgive us for any and all of our mistakes amin ya rabbil alamin then the shaykh said hafizallah ta'ala their hatred and enmity is for everyone who does not enter into the fitna blindly again let me go back to the beginning of the statement so we have the whole context of what the shaykh said very powerful very relevant to what we're dealing with the ummah over the last few years has become afflicted by that chronic ailment even some of those who associate themselves with the sunnah therefore they share in the fitna the trial the problems of the people of innovation and desires under the name of ahl sunnah then you will find they base their love and pact upon following so-and-so and supporting him even if he makes a mistake contradicting the text the text meaning the quran and sunnah and the creed of the salaf their hatred and enmity is for everyone who does not enter into the fitna blindly allahu akbar allahu akbar let me give you some con let me contextualize this and give you some uh, an idea of what the sheikh is talking about because we live this fitna and we know it and, and we know what the sheikh has been through and we, we've seen uh, this personally so I know what the sheikh is talking about and I uh, may Allah preserve him, I mean. So here, the sheikh is saying, for example, you'll find sometimes from some of our brothers and sisters and I, I'll give you a true story just to make it very relevant. I know a particular brother, he was a Sufi before. Then he went, when, when he first became Muslim, he's from Seattle, he was a Sufi. Then he became a Tekfiri. He was with a lot of these extreme Tekfiri people. And he used to call to that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided him from that to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. He became Salafi later. He said that he was in one locality. He became Salafi not in Seattle, in another uh, part of the country. He said that people came to him once about a particular scholar named uh, Sheikh, um, uh, uh, Sheikh Abu Hassan al-Ma'rabi, who, to clarify, is a hizbi. He's a person of Ahl Bida. But at one time, he was with Ahl Sunnah. But he fell astray in many errors, and our Sheikh, Sheikh Rabi' bin Hadi al-Madkhali, made clear in many books about him, and, and many of the Mashaykh pointed out his mistakes, and he didn't return from his mistakes, and may Allah guide us in him. Back to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The point being, this is a sheikh in the, a village in Yemen. 
in a province in Yemen. Brothers came to this particular brother, who was once a Sufi, now is new to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah, in a particular place in America. The brother doesn't speak Arabic, and I doubt the individuals who tested him spoke Arabic. They came to him and they said, Brother, what is your position with Abu Hassan Ma'rabi? The brother said, Well, I, I, I don't know. I, I've never heard of him. I, 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 you know, in a very humble way, you know, I, I don't know of him. I, I don't know. Ma'asalama. And they stopped uh, greeting him. They stopped greeting him for this. Isn't that misguidance? Who's, mis who's the one misguided here? Is it the brother who didn't know? Or is it those brothers who were hasty? Those brothers who tested the people with something the people didn't even need to deal with. Abu Hassan Marabi does not speak English. There's very little that's of his material even translated into the English language. But then you're going to test individuals in America that people have left kufr and shirk, people who have left being in gangs, taking people's heads, and, 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 and test him with this? Allahu Akbar. That, that's, that shows our priorities for some of our brothers is not in the proper place. And it shows misguidance. I'm going to make this point. It also shows misguidance on their part. Because this is not thiq fiddin. This is not what we learn from the ulama. And by the permission and mercy of Allah, and I'm not using this as a, not trying to brag, but Allahu Akbar, I've studied with many scholars in, in, in Medina to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the Prophet city, alayhi salatu wa I studied with Sheikh Abdul Masan al-Abad, who's a, an alam, Rabbani. I studied with Sheikh Muhammad Mukhtar al-Shanqiti. I studied with, uh, with uh, Sheikh Saleh al abud Sheikh Muhammad bin Hadi, Sheikh uh, uh, Ibrahim Rahali, Sheikh Suleiman Rahali, Sheikh, uh, many mashaykh there. And Mashaykh all throughout Saudi Arabia and in Yemen. And by Allah, I'm mentioning this to show you, this is not what they called us to. This is not what they told us to. This is not what we saw from the Minhaj of the Salaf being propagated by them, nor from the books. This kind of thing, making empty hand of people, testing the people with these kind of things. And I asked Sheikh Saleh Suhaimi and Bi'idnillah, I will... Uh, uh, for in, in the future time, I will translate it and put it out there for the people to benefit from. I asked him over six years ago about this issue, and he, he, he blasted that out. This is not from our methodology. May Allah forgive us and, and the people, because some of the people scared the people away from the dawah. And as the sheikh said, their hatred and enmity is for everyone who does not enter into the fitna blindly, meaning that you have to take a position with some of the people. So because the brother didn't take a position, he didn't follow blindly into the fitna, which wasn't even relevant to his people. His qawm don't even know the language, don't even know about this man. But because they didn't blindly follow into the fitna, he didn't say, okay, I, I, I don't like that scholar. Okay, that scholar is an innovator. Okay, Sheikh so-and-so was right and he's an alam. La ilaha illallah. Because he didn't do that, then their hatred, he earned their hatred of these brothers. They began not even giving him salams. Wallahu musta'an. The Shaykh said, Havad Allah Ta'ala, they will reject the text or reinterpret it if it goes against the statement of their Shaykh. And it is considered a strong proof and voices are raised until there is silence out of extreme fear. Many books are written as a proof in support of his statement. Subhanallah. Meaning that sometimes the people will fall into defending falsehood. Even if their Shaykh has... Uh, uh, you know, made a mistake or whatever, they will defend it to their last drop of blood. Wallah <laughs> musta'an. And there will also be books and things and, and so forth. There, the, the, the shahid being that there is a love and a hate based, based upon people sometimes over one particular issue. People will take you off the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say you're off it or what have you over one issue. And they make their love and their hate based upon these issues, which is a very serious and dangerous thing. And may Allah protect us, I mean. Then the Shaykh said, to the point, a man will be disparaged for an issue he resolved and another is praised due to his following desires. SubhanAllah, the people will overlook the faults of their companions just because they're their companions and they agree with them on one issue and they might have bid'ah or mistakes in other issues they'll overlook that 
But when it comes to overlooking someone else from Ahl Sunnah, we're not talking about the people of desires. We're talking about someone else from Ahl Sunnah who may have fell into a uh, mistake and then resolved it. They will never accept it. And I, I've witnessed this personally without getting into uh, personal details. May Allah forgive us and the people. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Then the Sheikh said, Honorable nicknames are given to the ignorant and young. Rather, even those who are rash, foolish, without experience in research and reporting to obtain their acceptance, which used to only be given to the firmly established imams of the religion during the time of the Salaf. The major scholars whose hair the major scholars whose hair has grayed in the pursuit of knowledge and practice are debased and ridiculed as being without understanding sometimes and having a lack of jealousy for the sunnah other times or accused of tamir, being careless or wasteful in the principles of the religion and all this is only due to the fact that they did not pursue the fitna because they didn't get involved in the fitna and because they reprimanded the person of fitna. Allahu Akbar. We're going to end right there and we'll pick up because this requires for us to detail a few things, and we'll do that in the next and last uh, le le uh, lesson in this book. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our sins. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika in ushrika bika wa ana a'lamu. Astaghfiruka liman a'lamu. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.